Welcome to Bake Angel Takes on the Great British Bake Off. Hi everyone, I'm Angela from Bake Angel and we're back with another exciting series of challenges from the Great British Bake Off. So what I'm going to do each week is take on one of the challenges from the three that the contestants do every week in the big tent. I'm going to put my own spin on them to make them allergy friendly and we're going to see whether those recipes actually work out. Let's see what we're doing this week. Paul would like you to produce a red velvet cake. Okay, so it's cake week and we're going to be doing a red velvet layer cake. Really excited to try this for you. Let's dive in and see how this turns out. So full disclosure here, I am actually using the cake recipe that is on the Bake Off website. This is a recipe that was made by Paul Hollywood and it is the exact cake recipe that the bakers were given in the tent for this week's technical challenge. Now I will pop the link for that in the description below, so make sure you check that out. And also I'm gonna pop my amended version that you can find on my website on bakeangel.com. So first of all, we have started by beating together some golden sugar and also some plant-based butter. Now the only amendments that I actually made to this cake were to change it from a full dairy version into a version that we could actually eat. So I swapped out the butter for plant-based butter and I also changed the buttermilk to a plant-based buttermilk and I will share a link to my recipe for vegan plant-based buttermilk in the description below as well. Now I'm just continuing through the recipe and I'm adding my eggs to it. So there's three eggs that go into this cake, which helps with the rise and helps with the richness as well. You're gonna add those to the mix one at a time. And something I will point out that surprised me when I made this, you are actually adding a lot of liquid to this recipe over time before you start to add any dry ingredients and it does look like it's curdling when that happens you can see here that you can almost see like those oil bits repelling against the rest of the mix so far but don't worry it does come together as you'll see later on in the video now we're going to mix together a paste which is actually going to give us that really vibrant red color and also the chocolatey taste that you may have had before in a red velvet cake. And to do that, we're just using a Dutch processed cocoa powder, some of my favorite Americola red food coloring, which is vegan as well, a little bit of vanilla bean paste and some hot water as well. And you mix all of that together in a bowl and look at the vibrant color that it creates. Now there is quite a bit of red food coloring in this. If you're concerned about that, you can always look for a natural version of food coloring instead but just be prepared that you may not get the really vibrant red coloring that you would expect for a red velvet cake if you do use something that's more natural in color then we're going to add all of that to our mixing bowl and combine everything together you can see it takes on that deep color straight away and again as i previously mentioned it actually looks like the mixture is quite split at this stage don't worry though it's perfectly fine it will come together Next, we're gonna to start to finally add the buttermilk that I mentioned earlier and also our dry ingredients finally, which will help bring everything together. Start off by adding some of that flour and this is just a regular self-raising flour. I have a recipe for that if you don't have any in your pantry and you just wanna make your own. It is super, super easy to make your own self-raising flour as well. And we're gonna alternate between adding that and adding some of our buttermilk. This will start to definitely combine everything together and lose that kind of curdled look that you noticed earlier as well. Again, it's maintaining that beautiful red vibrant color and it obviously smells really good at this stage too. You can start to smell that cocoa powder as everything is mixing together. So we're gonna add the rest of our buttermilk and then the rest of our flour. And you can see I'm doing this as it mixes because it's just gonna combine everything a lot quicker for us. Now this is actually gonna make three six inch cakes for us. Those are then gonna be cut in half and we are going to layer them together. Okay, the final thing we need to do is add together the fizz to our cake, which helps it rise and create that nice tang. And that's the combination of vinegar and bicarb of soda, which will react with the buttermilk as well. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and put everything in our cake pan. So you can see here, I have three six inch cake pans. I've greased them with some plant-based butter and I've lined the bottom with parchment circles as well. Now for convenience, I decided to actually fill the cake batter by using an ice cream scoop. You could of course weigh it if you wanted to to make sure that each of those pans is filled equally. I just kind of like to eyeball it and that's where the ice cream scoop comes in really handy because it's kind of less messy as well. But as long as you've got them pretty much evenly distributed, you won't really need to worry about it. So just keep going until those pans are full and your mixing bowl is empty. Then we're gonna flatten everything out and pop them in our oven. Now, something else I should make a note of as you're watching this is I actually found that the cakes weren't ready when the recipe said they should have been. So the recipe says that you should bake the cakes for about 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine were not ready at that point. They actually took 32 minutes in total to bake. And when they were finally ready, they came out looking like this. You can see that they're really well risen. They've almost come to the top of the baking pans. And now I'm just gonna let them sit and cool completely before we move on to the next stage. We will actually remove them and then we will be splitting them in half. So now that our cakes are cooling, we can go ahead and make the cream cheese filling and icing for the red velvet cake. Now this is a key element of this recipe. You really can't have red velvet cake without having some kind of cream cheese filling and icing with it. So for this, the recipe asked for some cream cheese, double cream, vanilla extract, ice and sugar, mascarpone, and salt. And because I needed to make this a non-dairy version, I did have to make a couple of substitutions. So instead of using mascarpone cheese, I increased the amount of cream cheese. And for the double cream, I actually used a coconut whipping cream instead, which I've used before for a lot of my recipes where they've asked for double cream, and I've never ran into any issues with them. So essentially what you're gonna do is combine all of those in your stand mixer, and this is what it looks like after beating for two minutes. You can see that it's a bit of a runny mess, and I'm actually gonna admit to you here that I did not think this recipe was good at all. I ended up adding a total of one kilogram of icing sugar to this recipe, where the recipe originally only asked for 300 grams, but if you know anything about icing, you know that your ratio of dry ingredients to wet ingredients has to be right, otherwise you're gonna end up with a big, huge, soupy mess. And you can probably guess what happened here. This icing did not work out at all for me. This is actually what it looked like after I beat it for even more time. And it is still a huge, soupy mess. Now it tasted wonderful, but of course you cannot ice a cake with this. You certainly can't fill it because it's gonna run out the sides. So I ended up having to use my own cream cheese icing recipe instead, and you can find the link for that above, and I'll also post it in the description below as well. So we're gonna move on to actually preparing our cake layers now. You can see on my counter here, I just have my work mat, I have some parchment paper, and I'm just gonna pop each of the cakes out of the baking pans. They come out really easily now they've cooled as well. And I'm gonna use this trusty cake leveler. Now, this is an old Wilton one that I've had for very many years. I think you can actually pick them up in the dollar store now. So if you ever see one of these, definitely pick it up. They are amazing to use for leveling cakes. Uh, it's definitely my preferred method. I know that some people like to use a knife instead. I kinda like the accuracy of this though because you can actually set the wire height against the ridges that are on the side of the leveler. First thing we're gonna do is take that top off the cake. Now these didn't dome very much, but I actually want a little bit of extra cake so that I can crumble it at the end to put on the sides of the cake and a little bit on the top as well, just to decorate it. Then you're gonna peel that top off. I actually popped mine in some plastic wrap so I could let it dry out a little bit, which will make it easier to crumble later on as well. And then we're gonna move on and change the height of the leveler so we can actually split this cake in half. Now this is the great thing about this recipe actually. The cake recipe itself is actually very, very good for making a really nice size cake. So again, it's a three 
tear cake that's actually cut into six layers just by cutting them in half because they do rise really nicely because we use self-raising flour. So all I've done there is just change the level and we've split that into two. So remember that we went and we made a different cream cheese icing and we're going to go ahead and use that and actually start to put our cake together. So I'm going to use a couple of different spatulas for this and I chose just a nice blue cake stand for the cake to actually sit on. You saw first of all that I added a little bit of the icing to the bottom so that we could actually stick that first layer on it and then it's literally just the case of building that cake. So you're going to put a layer down, you're going to fill it with your cream cheese icing, then you're going to pop another layer on top more icing, another layer, more icing, keep going until you get to the very last layer. Now my top tip here, which I always use and always recommend whenever you're doing layer cakes, is always make sure that that very last layer that you put on top is the layer that is the bottom of a cake, not the one that you cut, so that you've actually got that really closed crumb on it. Now you will see that you do get crumbs in this kind of cake. This cake was pretty crumbly, I was very surprised about that. But sometimes crumbliness is just one of those things when you make a cake that is full of moisture and as well because it can tend to be a little bit sort of a looser mix because it has all that cocoa in it and again it just seemed to crumble very easily. But I did add the bottom of one of the tiers here so you can see that it stays nice and smooth and that will enable me to actually have a cleaner top to my cake. You'll notice as I'm starting to frost this that a lot of the crumbs do actually appear in the side. So be careful with that. Make sure you're always wiping your spatula when you are icing a cake like this. I actually didn't mind the look of it because it's a red velvet cake and it was just a kind of nice way for that red color to peek through the side icing a little bit. And like I say, I put extra icing on top just to try and keep that a little bit on the cleaner side. Top tip for you when you are doing layer cakes, and this is something that really wasn't mentioned in the recipe, is to actually chill your cake before you ice it, as it will firm up a little bit and actually create a little less crumbs in that icing when you are putting it on there. So you can see here, I did add a lot of icing to the top, so I'm just going around now and thinning it down. Uh, you could go as thin or as thick as you like with the icing. Make sure you do leave a little bit though, because we are gonna do something a little extra on the top of it, which is the same as they did on the show as well. Just cleaning off the base with a bit of paper towel, and then we are going to do one other thing to the sides first, and that's actually use those cake crumbles. So this is just the offcuts that we created with our leveler. I crumbled them up on the plastic wrap to let them dry out a little bit, and then you just essentially kind of drop them onto the side of the cake, and they will actually stick because the icing is still fairly moist at this stage. To finish the cake off, we're gonna add a little swirl of icing. I'm using a tipless bag and a star tip. You can use a 1M or a 2D. And that little bit of the cream cheese icing that we have left, just pop that into your bag. And this is gonna add just a little bit of an extra dimension to it. Finishes the cake off really, really nicely as well. If you're not a fan of cake decorating, definitely have a try of this. It's a lot easier than you think it would be. I'm just going to twist that bag up and close it up as well so that the icing doesn't come out the wrong end when I'm ready to squeeze it. There we go and then we can cut the end off of it. Now make sure you don't cut too much off otherwise that piping nozzle will actually fall at the end as you start to squeeze. You want to cut I guess about a half inch when you do that and then you just hold it above the surface of the cake, give it a squeeze and a bit of a turn at the same time and you can make a little ruffle on top. To finish it off, we're gonna add a few more of those cake crumbles and then we'll be ready to eat our cake. And now for the all important taste test. So we are gonna do a really nice slice of this. Now because there's eight of those little swirls on top, you could cut this into eight cut it into 16, as many slices as you want. I think it's quite a nice size though if you cut it into eight because it is a fairly small cake but a fairly large one. So the slices are actually quite big. 
Now this is the moment of truth though. We want to see the ratio of icing and see how it compares. This is actually something that was picked up in the show that they wanted to make sure there was a good ratio of icing to cake. So let's have a look and see what this looks like. So straight away you can see that gorgeous contrast between the red and the white. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. I think I probably would have added a little more icing next time, but I do think it looks really good for a recipe that I've done for the very first time. So there we go. There's our Poor Hollywood Great British Bake Off Technical Challenge. Okay, so our cake is done. We've gone ahead and cut a slice from it as well. Let's just take another look before we try it. So you can see here my ratio of icing to cake could have been a little bit better, but I still think it looks pretty good. You've got that really nice contrast of the red and the white. And of course, as I explained during the video that we had to do a slightly different icing recipe because the one that was given just didn't work out for me at all. So let's dive in. I want to try this now and see what it tastes like. It's really good actually, nice chocolate flavor, which you'd expect from a red velvet. Nice and moist as well, which is really, really good. Sometimes a red velvet cake can be quite dry. But this one just seems to have worked out perfectly. So apart from the issues with the icing that we had, everything did turn out great. So I would probably give this one maybe a six out of 10. So make sure you tune in next week to see what we'll be doing on the next episode. And until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>